The U.S. has put goods such as steel and soybeans at the center of its trade dispute with China. But John Lipsky, formerly with the IMF, says the two nations should be more focused on emerging industries. I spoke with him exclusively today at the China Institute Executive Summit in New York. First of all, trade war, boy, that's a, that's, that's a very martial image. Uh, and it also sounds very specific. And of course, some of the rhetoric on the U.S. side has made it sound as if the complaints are quite specific. Autos, steel, aluminum, etc. And the actions, of course, that have been taken and the counteractions threatened uh, are very specific. But it sounds to me like the underlying dispute or issues, put it better, uh, are over much broader th things, especially technology transfer and the, the future of trade that is going to move for sure away, as it has been already, away from manufacturers and toward services, data, artificial intelligence, all the, all the areas where we see the great growth. And trying to establish the rules of the game uh, strikes me as way more important. And so I find this trade war rhetoric unsettling, uh, and also, to a certain extent, beside the point. I hope it's not more than just trying to give political motion so that there will be an outcome uh, rather than take viewed too specifically. So while the Trump administration fusses about with metals imports and imports on other uh, Im tariffs on imported Chinese goods, what should they be focused on when it comes to intellectual property rights? Because to set up a new rules of the road, they need to be seeing eye to eye and have common definitions. Are we there yet? Do we have oh, common no, definitions? Oh, no, we're a long way from that. And these are very complex issues, and that's why it's a little hard to say. One of the problems here is it's, it's a little hard to discern what the U.S. red lines are. What, are. what are the real goals? Is it really steel? But steel's a small part of, uh, of the picture. And you'd say, looking forward, these Tech, let's call them intellectual property technology transfer issues, are uh, undoubtedly going to be much more important. So hopefully that's, that's the real focus, but it's, it's a little hard to discern our priorities. Especially maybe that's there's a, so much noise about. Well, maybe that's a negotiating tactic. It's a little scary, um, but if it, if it gets to yes in a positive way, I guess we'll all, we'll all take a deep breath and exhale and relax and say, okay, uh, but right now it's, uh, added a lot of tension. Okay, so we don't know exactly where the U.S. red line is or the U.S. strategy. What's China's strategy? I mean, when you look at how China presented its priorities at the Boao conference, yes. what did you learn about what China's roadmap is for where it sees it going in the next 5, 10, 15 years? Well, that's a very good question. And let's take a, take a step back and put it in a little context. Uh, the 13th five-year plan which lays out uh, a number of things. One, a much more market-oriented uh, economy driven by uh, a much more modernized, market-driven financial system, much more open capital markets, but also China 2025, which is to say we're gonna focus on this sector and that sector and that sector. Mm -hmm. uh, now, many of the favorable aspects uh, of that plan we're also in the 12th five-year plan and the 11th five-year plan. So there's a consistency. Well, but they haven't happened. So the point is, are, is this really the plan? Is when you say this is what we're going to do, is that what you're going to do? And that's where I think President Xi's uh, speech was quite important. It su certainly suggested that the, that the uh, movement is towards a more market-driven economy, one that we would call more reformed and more liberalized and more certainly uh, uh, more favorable to China's trading partners. A reorientation toward consumption spending, domestic development that will certainly draw in more imports, a more liberalized investment regime, all of that is promised. And the unlimited term limits that he now has enables him to follow through on that? Well, that's it, it should in theory. Well, that's a question. Uh, a lot of the press said, oh, president for life. I thought, well, maybe this really solves a problem that in his second term, uh, he doesn't become a lame duck. And because there are obviously important political forces in China against reform. So uh, the worry would be, to me, even if he, having set the stage in term one, intended to move forward, if there was a hard term limit, the risk would be, I'll just hold my breath till you're gone. Mm -hmm. 